Dog training is just as much about people as it is about the dogs. It's not just about motivating the dog, but motivating yourself to train more efficiently, more fairly, and at the highest level. My name is Miles Nanor, professional decoy, canine practitioner, and mentor. And this is Behind the Stick. Welcome to Behind the Stick. Today we're gonna do some indirect rewards to uh, uh, to some obedience. Uh, we'll talk about what that is. I'll show you a picture of it. We're gonna ask the dog for some form of obedience or, or some task to perform, and indirectly the dog will get re rewarded. What we mean by indirectly is that reward is not gonna come directly from me, but it's gonna come from a secondary or uh, yeah, secondary or third party source, right? So that could be a dog food bowl across the, the room. It could be um, to uh, a helper or spotter that's working with you that's holding a reward. Um, so that's what we mean by indirect. Direct, the, the reward is not coming directly from the marker of the reward. You can look at this dog and tell that the dog is very motivated. So although we're playing with an indirect reward today, the whole purpose is to improve a behavior that we're working, right? Because we're training our dogs. Um, so with her, we're going to be trying to improve her healing. So instead of just taking uh, every opportunity to correct the dog or, uh, uh, or provide some sort of reversive, we want a longer duration because we have a very motivated dog and we don't want them to blow up and get to the point where it's like, freak it, I don't even want to listen. Um, um, I'm too spun up um, and we want to provide the positive reinforcement more than, than anything. So for this dog, some Malinois, uh, we know her, she likes to bite, so we're going to um, do indirect rewards for her healing. Uh, here's some random equipment here that we can use for the reward. For this dog, uh, we're going to start with something hard, we'll start with half sleeve, completely on the body, and uh, go from there. Right. Just get used to your stroking as you do it, but she will. More strokes than, than, than corrections. Again, very high driven dog, so we want longer patterns with her than shorter patterns. We don't want her thinking she's gonna be uh, successful every 30 seconds. Um, the model that I use is more work for more reward. Like she's gotta do more work for more opportunities. And that's improving, so I'm ready when you are. Gates. 
Hey, I don't. That's a good Roddy. <laughs> I don't care nobody says. It's a solid you want to see a good Roddy? Come squat. Got one. It was good. I think what I did towards the end there was I tried to trail the handler a little bit more. Um, again, maybe one step towards success. Um, the position that I was in, it was turning a lot, and we don't really believe that if we have to correct something uh, more than two or three times that we're teaching it properly. We want to produce way more positive repetitions of something than we do negative repetitions. If we have to correct something more than two or three times, we have to consider that the variables that we've taught or something that we're doing isn't clear. Therefore, we need to make the dog more successful. So I changed the angle uh, to make the dog a little bit more successful, make it more difficult for him to see me, even if he did fall out of focus. Um, therefore, there was less of a reason for him to want to fall out of focus. Did that, did a couple repetitions at the end, and um, that was a good session. balanced trainer you have to provide more successful repetitions without conflict than you do negative repetitions with aversive or conflict now the aversive has to be clear has to be fair and so I've taken the complete opposite of what most trainers would do in a sense and not even really free shaping but I'm just waiting it out we're standing here he's doing what he knows I see rest after that, he knows the scenario. He knows that there's a decoy or helper in front of him. He understands that he is at some point about to bite him because that's what we do when we do this. However, I'm just waiting him out. I'm giving him cues to say, hey, look at me. He looks at me. I give my bridge or, my, or a positive marker that he understands. And then it's followed by the reward. So without conflict, He's clearly going to learn what it takes to access that reward. But in essence, I'm teaching a focal point, um, a heel, uh, an attention. I'm teaching engagement. I'm teaching all of those things with him, as well as making this completely black and white. correct clearly for because he understands those two things and even though at this moment he's being operant and uh, searching for the reward um, I think I can good Your presentation, you want your bite bar almost down, let's say at a 30 degree angle. So that, cause I, they're always gonna come up and in like that instead of flat out. Beautiful. He 
give him one of the legs leave. Uh, rest. It's cold, so I know we haven't been out here 10 minutes yet uh, as far as working on him. Um, but I think within that eight minutes or so, we see how quickly he adjusted to understanding what provided the reward. Without me having to create a bunch of conflict, start punishing, uh, positive punishment immediately, or anything in that scenario. So we're gonna do it again with him. Uh, we switched biting services, so good rest. Baby taps. So knowing that we're increasing the, the uh, amount of distraction or proofing right now, I'm still not, I'm choosing not to create any conflict. He's gonna wanna go, but he can't go. I'm holding the line, right? To me, there's no conflict there. He did that to himself. It wasn't because of me, it's because he made a choice, right? When I start to get his attention, he will see, good boy, what behooves him. And now we're adding a, light, a little bit of distraction. So the intensity that he's gonna create this engagement is gonna be so much more intense, all because he chose to, not because I forced it. Baby taps. Good. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Evo. Done. Sparks your puppies to get out of here. <laughs>